Our fairy pod mother and the original Tinkerbell reference model is back! Margaret Carey is here with us now to talk all about her new memoir, Tinkerbell Talks, Tales of a Pixie Dusted Life, which is now only a few weeks away from its official release. However, many lucky fans who attended a special collector's copy event at Walt's Barn in Griffith Park on August 7th, you may just have picked up a rare first edition, Printer's Proof. So everyone, spread your pixie dust and help us welcome Ms. Margaret Carey. Hey, hey, Margaret. Oh, what a beautiful introduction. Uh, <laughs> you guys, you know, you should keep doing this. You're getting better and better and better. Remarkable. Well, Aww. we're just coming on to our third year of doing this, so See? I'm getting better and better. Folks, give them another couple of years and you will be amazed. <laughs> yeah. No, no, sincerely, thank you. That was a lovely introduction. Thank you. Well, of thank course. you, thank you. Now, going back to episode 26... <laughs> yeah. This is episode 135. You are on episode 26. You were just starting to tell us about your, your book that you were writing. Well, that was, what, 13 years ago when you started? <laughs> Episode 26, wow, I think that was 2014. Well, you, you 2014, know, in April. I have um, a friend of mine, Linda Swisher, who at the moment is double checking the proofing again. We'll, we'll get into that story, but she said, uh, you didn't put quotes around this chapter, and you did about the last chapter title. And I said, Linda, I did that four years ago. Uh, <laughs> I think I changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a woman's prerogative to so, change your mind. Yes, so yes, we, it is. we now call her Miss Consistency. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, she's going to make everything consistent. I said, they won't recognize my book. <laughs> So how many years have you been working on Tinkerbell Talks? Well, actually, it has been about 13 years, believe it or not. Wow. I started out with the idea of I was going to make it into this beautiful sort of scrapbook. Scrapbooking had come in, and we were going to have the background on each page, like a scrapbook, and then a picture, and then the story, and so on and so forth. And I found out that it was $21 a book to have if I bought 50,000 of them. <laughs> So Whoa. I went, you know, I don't think that's quite the idea. <laughs> so I dropped it for a while. And um, I was working here at KKLA. That's where we're doing this uh, interview, uh, my, the, my favorite radio station over in Glendale. And then oh, I picked it up again about three years later. And then I wrote something. And my daughter, who is also editing the book, Christina um, McCarty Genter, she said, is this going to be a sad book, Mom? Is this going to be an angry book? Oh, no. And I said, oh, no. That's exactly what I said. How <laughs> did you know? <clears throat> and I said, oh, no. And I read it, and it was. Oh. And so I, I dropped it again. And then the next time, I had this grandiose idea of the way it was going to have deckled edges. It was going to be this. It was going to be that. And somebody said, Margaret, you're getting on in years. Don't you think you should just get it done? <laughs> <laughs> wow, who said that? <laughs> <laughs> My son. So, and he was right. But is any artistic endeavor ever done? Uh, not this one because I have the one that's um what do they call it? Printed on demand? Yes. Well, I found out because of the hoopla with my first printing here, I found that you can stop everything and send in another chapter and change it. Oh. Uh, yes, as you go along. I thought, that sounds like me. So if someone so, buys it beforehand, you can still just send in another chapter and change it? Uh-huh. And the next person who buys it will get the new chapter. Uh -huh. Wow. <laughs> My goodness. I, I would let them know, of course, because you, you put a little number down. Is that this is, this is the, they say first edition. I, I think it should say first try. <laughs> yes, oh. but you know it sounds more formal when you say first edition and you can yes. uh, ask for more for it i i know i know <laughs> you think so but uh i when you said memoir what i ended up with are very short chapters that are all most all of them are very funny okay there's a beginning a middle or as they say in Toastmasters, a muddle and an ending. And most, uh, Bob Gurr gave me the most beautiful review the other night. 
Uh, and it, it was out of the blue. I had no idea that he'd been reading it. And it's the kind of book that it's, was just for entertainment. I'm an entertainer. I'm a storyteller. See, I was adopted when I was three and a half. I found my family 50 years later, found out that I was Scots-Irish, a storyteller down to my toenails. <laughs> and I then figured it out. I'm a talker. And so the whole book is that you... You pick up a chapter, you read it, and you say, oh, I love it. And then you can put it down and then go about your business, pick up another. And that's what he's been doing. And he gave me the nicest compliment because it's written as I talk. I have dot, dot, dots in the book. <laughs> uh, like, wait a minute. No, no, it goes the other way. That kind of thing. Or uh, you might be uh, in one place it says, it said, Dear reader, you might be the one who skips around, so I have to repeat this, you know, <laughs> kind, kind of thing. And, it's, and he said, but I loved it. He said, Margaret, you don't tell us a story. You put us in the story mm. that you were there because it started all. I was born in 1929 and caused the Depression, <laughs> and everything went right downhill after I was born. And they put me to work when I was four. And I've been working 83 years, and I've loved it, and I'm an entertainer. So that's what this book is. It's, it's a memoir, yes, but you don't put in the memoir that you um, were accosted in the l nicest manner at an animation company by this little man named Archie Ivy who says, I got to have, I got to have. Uh, seven minutes of animation in 10 days. And they're telling me, ma'am, you're the only one that can do it. Can you do it? Can you do it? And I said, well, no. I'm, and I'm telling him, you know, all the things. I said, what is it for? He says, well, it's for George Clinton. It's for a Funkadelic. <laughs> wow. And I looked at him and I thought, what's that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, he was so surprised I didn't know it because they tour every place with oh, it. Okay. And so... I said, well, I could try. So I was up for the next 10 days driving cells that had just been painted from Glendora all the way into Hollywood to a camera department that was staying open through the night to photograph it so that we could then take it to the lab, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and match it up to the music that they already had. And the best part about the story is... <laughs> I made it oh. on Friday morning. <gasps> I made it. And yeah, this yeah. was a touring group. And, you know, no offense, but an, a man named Archie Ivy with a, an afro that he had to go through the door, doorway <laughs> sideways, you know, you, you, you're going, uh, and a tour, touring group. So I told my husband boss, I said, get the money. That, those are the rules with a touring group. Mm. Uh, they can't give you a check. They have to give you, if, if they do, it's a, what is it called? Cashier, 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 cashier yes. check uh, or cash or whatever. Those are the rules of the county of Los Angeles. So I said, don't give him this. I had not even seen it because I had to go off to another meeting. I was this sort of salesperson, which was, I wasn't very good at it, but I was the one that they had. So anyway, I was, so Richard, you know, get the money. Okay, okay, I got it, I got it, he said. And so I went off to wherever it was, and I came back in the afternoon, and I said, Archie Ivy here? Yeah, got the money? No. Oh, no. Oh, no. He didn't have it with him. Oh. What? And I'm going. It's in the mail, huh? No, they can't do that. So, that was their excuse. So Check anyway, I'm saying, I go over to their office on Sunset Boulevard uh -oh. at the Sunset Strip, uh -oh. which is not a city-owned property. The county runs it, so they go by the county rules. And so these people, the touring group, rent an office for a couple of, of weeks or a month, and then they leave. I mean, everybody knows that that's the way it works. Nobody's doing anything underhand. What time period was this? I'm sorry? What time period was this? Oh, I don't know. Like the Is this post 40s, Tinkerbell? Yes. Oh, okay, okay. So anyway, anyway, because it's post uh, Mermaid, that's when I went into voiceover work. So nice. I worked with him. And so I go over and uh, I'm thinking, he's gone. He's gone, you know, and I am just fit to be tied. 
And you can be fit to be tight if it's your husband boss. Right. So I get get into this nondescript building, and I look down this long corridor that goes to the very back of the, of the building, and there are fellas who must have been nine foot seven standing on either side, holding up the building, talking about this, that, or the other, or whatever it was. And I'm five foot two, right? And I really, I stood out. (laughs) So I went down and I'm I'm looking at this little bald man who's sitting behind a desk, a battered up desk, because it's a rental desk. And I said, I'm looking for Mr. Archie Ivy. Oh, he gone. And I thought, oh, shoot, I knew it, I knew it. And I said, well, I'm uh, Margaret Carey, and I'm the one who produced the animation that you used a couple of days ago at the Shrine. <gasps> we love it. You're the little mama that did that? <laughs> and I said, yes. Oh, hey, fellas, this little mama who did that. You stopped the show. Mm-hmm. You stopped the show. We had to play it twice. He says, it was wonderful. <laughs> you know, and I'm going, well, I'm feeling better by now, as you can imagine. <laughs> I said, well, Mr. Ivy didn't have the money with him, so I came to collect. The, it was three thousand oh. dollars. I says, and he start, and then the door opened, and George Clinton walked yeah. out. Very nice looking man, really uh, well formed. You you know you yes. notice it. Very husky, but a well formed man. And he says, what is going on? And they said, this here's a little mama, you know. He said, really? I just shook my hand. He said, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. And I said, well, thank you, because I never saw it. Oh. And he said, what you want? I said, well, want the th- Archie said $3,000. He says, well, give it to her. Oh. So they open- he opened up this little old drawer in the middle of the desk that could hardly, you know, it was broken and all. And here were the rolls of of cash wow. with rubber bands around because of course you feel like a bandit they, they no they, <laughs> they took it all in for the tickets naturally yeah. so he says this one looks about right oh. so he hands it to me <laughs> wow. and then the George Clinton said well we like it so much give her 300 dollars more uh, wow back in those days that's yeah. a king's yeah. ransom so i got 300 dollars as i'm walking out and it's and as i'm going out one of them says he says, Mama, it was witching. It was witching as I walked out. Wow. Have, well, have you ever thought about repoing cars? Uh, 35 years later, I'm over at a Hollywood celebrity show. And somebody says, George Clinton's across the uh, aisle. Oh. you got to go see him. So I went over and I chatted with him a minute. And I said, uh, you know, I'm the one. He says, we're still using it. <laughs> wow. After wow. 30 five years oh my goodness. and I said well I've never seen it and so get out your droid he said uh, and they showed it to me on the droid I hope it looks better phone. on stage yeah. than it did on the droid <laughs> well, oh, that's funny. so if anyone wants to see this video where can they go and, and catch it have no idea okay <laughs> I, so uh, if, okay. if we google Margaret Carey George Clinton no I don't think so uh, George Clinton maybe but but the point was, those are the kind of stories that are in my book. Okay, uh, so it's not just about Tinkerbell. It's like your whole life. Tinkerbell you... is part four. Okay. And how I met Mark and talked to Walt Disney and uh, uh, all of the different things that happened, working with Bobby Driscoll, et cetera, et cetera. And the trip to London that, uh, that Disney sent. Uh, Catherine Beaumont and I yes. on, uh, and what happened over there, and about Mindy Johnson and how she was our shepherd. I never would have made it through that trip without Mindy. <laughs> she was just wonderful. Oh. And then there's a wonderful uh, part, I think, that you will like. If you, I have the book with me, the marked-up book, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Yes. <laughs> Oh, that was... Did I just see a picture of Julie Andrews? No, that's me. Uh, oh! And the, and the next page looked like her. Next, is that her? No, that's me that's with you? Mark wow. Davis. <laughs> it looked like Julie Andrews back in the day. And that's me, too. Oh! oh. So, oh that is a little rascal so right there. Skywalkers, if you get this book, there's all kinds of fun pictures in there's there. There's about 80. Wow. So let me get the right one so I can pick this out. Um... um and I cast, I'm the one who cast Peter Pan, the the model for it, and I cast a model for Captain Hook. There you go. So 
So and all that happened. In there all those stories. Now, let me get the right one. But I'm glad that it not only talks about you as Tinkerbell, but your whole life has been so interesting. So I mean, well, it's really um, amazing. As Bob Gurr said, and I hope people know who Bob Gurr is, a legend, a Disney legend that did the monorail and all the designed uh, so much of Disneyland and the lights for Michael Jackson for his show, etc. But uh, on the back of it, I'll, sh- I'll, I'll give this to you in a minute. Sure. Let me finish what I'm doing here, and you'll you'll have a lot of editing to right. do. You know, I, I got to ask you. I, I hope you're doing the the book Fif- recording, 50. the adaptation on audio books. I just want to get the book done first. <laughs> oh, then she'll think about that. I I'm, I'm supposed to do it right here at KKLA. Oh yeah, as a matter. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> two oh eight wow. is the page. All right. The reason I'm bringing this up is, and we can do touches of it if you like. Okay. I also have a. A, a, page, a page in here that says, or a, a chapter, I should say, and the title is, My Mascara Fails, Tink Becomes Animated. And when I was called up into the projection room with everybody to watch her be animated the very first time, <gasps> and I have pictures of of what they used. Uh, it was pencil test, and then how it came out in the movie finally. And you know, I'm sitting there watching it go over and over again, and I'm going, and then I, I realized I was sniffling because I was crying. Aww. You know, I had done all this work, and this was the first time that I'd actually seen her animated. And I took my handkerchief out, and it was all black. Uh-oh. And I realized I was a mess because my mascara failed me. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Mr. Disney was there, and uh, that story again. There's a big thing in the book. I was brought up to be in awe of a studio head. They were like God. You hardly ever saw them. If any, if they ever came near you, you stopped everything that you were doing. And as a dancer said when I was working the Fox movie as assistant dance director there, uh, Georgie Jessel came on the sound stage with all the dancers and his entourage and so on and so forth. And everything stopped. And this dancer behind me, she said, should we curtsy? <laughs> I mean, that's what you felt like. Well, Walt Disney, bless him, was never, ever, 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 ever like that. And in the projection room, it was it was crowded. Mm. I did not realize, having gone on to other things that I was doing, that there were many on the lot that thought that Tinkerbell would not work. Oh, that she was too curvy, that she was too everything, et cetera. And so they came to see. And I heard this door behind me um, open up, and I heard uh, somebody say, Oh, here, Walt, take my seat. Huh? And I, you heard the voice that everybody knows. No, I'm fine. And I went, I'm fine? In the other places, they would have silk draped across four chairs and if you took one of those uh. chairs your head would roll you know that that kind of thing it was amazing to me uh, and it still is t- pretty much to this day i mean you go disney's you can walk up to john lassiter and start chatting with him as he's walking down the sidewalk it is so different a- and you could do the same thing really at uh, dreamworks Okay. DreamWorks was was built a lot, but the others. It was like Warner Brothers used to say to me, "You know, well, come on in, behave yourself, and we may let you stay." Uh, you know that that was the feeling mentality. that you got. Yeah, I think these studios now are being run by the kids who grew up on the movies. Yes, yeah? yes, that they're now working with. Yes, and people get very. I'm all over the place. I'm sorry, you're going to have a wild edit, but I've had people who are upset. Because there are people at Disney who don't know who I am. Oh No, seriously. I said, wait a minute. You get a 23-year-old who is coming in, and often they're the head of a department now because they know all of the digital stuff and, and right. you know, I'm doing all. How could they know? Give them some slack. And, and I said, it's up to me to go and, and see them. Right. Oh, okay, but they should know. <laughs> anyway, I have on chapter 50, it's uh, who is Tinkerbell really? And one of the things that I point out on that, and I love, I brought my little book about 
baby names. I, I take this with me every place that I go because names are so important. Do you know what a tinker is? Someone who works on things, like makes things, pots and pans. Do you know what a tinker is? It's okay tiny because tiny most fairy? people don't. Because most people don't. We have a nice man sitting over here. His name is David. I'm going to ask him. Do you know what a David, tinker you know what? is? Someone who makes bells. <laughs> nope. Well, <clears throat> it's very important to know why she's called Tinker Bell. And so I start off with that. And James M. Barry was born in Currimure, uh, Scotland, in the Angus County. And he was uh, back in, what, 18... 18- 89, I think, something like that. Anyway, it's the late, late, late 1800s. And he would know, he would see a tinker coming. A tinker is what we used to know as gypsies. Oh. They're now called travelers. There's quite a few of them up in San Francisco, as a matter of fact. They live by the side of the road. But one of the ways that they live is by um, repairing things. So at the risk of being a school marmish, uh, you couldn't run over to Home Depot and said, I'll buy a new skillet, you know, a new iron skillet. They had to be repaired. In fact, they were so important, they were often put in somebody's will. Uh, who wow. was Yes. You couldn't cook. Mm-hmm. So tinkers were very important people. Uh, they were outside of the... Um, Society. Of the whole village, but but they were they came in usually with these big heavy wooden carts with pots and pans hanging off the sides, so you could hear hear them clinking again. Uh, you could hear it way in the distance, right. and a big old horse or a, a mule uh, pulling it, and so then people would say, "Fix this, fix that." So he gave her a very important job to do. And, you, and did you notice on the Tinkerbell and the Fairies movies, they always have her doing a job. Mm-hmm. I argue a little bit with the going to work to nine to five. I don't see Tinkerbell doing that. But, but besides <laughs> that, it, it gives her importance. And it's important for names. Names are so important. Right. And so when I talk to children or grown-ups, and they come to my table at the different places, the first thing I say, what is your name? And they'll say, Sarah. And I say, with an H or without an H? You know, and they go, without an H. And I go, oh, yay! Because it's so important. Um, Do you say, oh, yay, with with an H as well? Yes. Okay. <laughs> but, you, but don't let that get around, okay? All right. Uh, don't worry, we haven't started recording yet. <laughs> but, uh, for example, I, had, I have a grandson who is now 39, if you can imagine. And when he was 17, I didn't know I was going to let him live for the good of America. I mean, it was, it was pretty touch and go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he was bewildered and bewitched. He had no idea what was going on. So he called me up. He says, Grim Tink, I'm Mike from now on. I'm going to be Mike, not Michael. Did he really call you Grandma Tink? He still does. I'm, oh! Graham, I'm Graham Tink. That's, That's what awesome. I am to the whole family. Graham apostrophe Tink. So anyway, I said, Michael, your name comes from two wonderful sources. Micah, the prophet, and E.L. stands for God, like Joel Gabriel, Daniel, those all have God. It means who is like God. If anybody needs God in their life, it is you. You are Michael. (laughs) And he says, yes, Uh, (laughs) ma'am. He's been Michael ever since. And he he tells people about his name. Wow. So I bring my little baby book and I say, what does it mean? What does your name mean? Well, Clarion comes from the name Clara and means clarity. It means uh, clearness and with the sound of a trumpet. So anyway, Tinkerbell, and I, I've gone on much too long, but you have good scissors. You can come. <laughs> and then I ask, does she really love Peter Pan? Does, is she really jealous of Wendy? Uh, what is the other? There's a couple of other questions. 
and it's my take on who is Tinkerbell. And then the next chapter, and then I introduce a lot of people to the face model oh. for Tinkerbell. Okay. Yes. Um, well, that wasn't you. I didn't know that. No. Oh, oh. it's a wonderful story. You got a minute? Sure. <laughs> we should probably start recording this. Nah. <laughs> well, Mindy Johnson was the greatest researcher I have ever heard. She's wonderful. She did the great big book, The Evolution of, of uh, Tinkerbell. Wow. Which is just a great book. Anyway, um, there was a picture of Williams. What is his first name? He was with the um, the Musketeers, the big heavy set fellow. His first name. Uh, I want to see Kenny Williams, and that's not right. Oh, he's famous. Anyway, we'll we'll find it. So anyway, of this fellow, who is an animator at Disneyland, and there's a woman posing as he has the storyboard or the character board from Mark Davis in his hands. And nobody knew who she was. So Mindy, in her own inimitable way, sent out, I've got to find out who this woman is. Yeah. And serendipity, I love serendipity. I live by serendipity. Uh, she found out. Her, a friend of hers was at a party walking by a group of people, and she heard, he heard this one man said, my mother was the model for Tinkerbell. So he went back and he says, who was, who was your mother? And uh, Ginny Mac it was the name. She was working at Disney's at the time. Mm. So was her husband. And uh, so they got in touch. And I have a picture of Ginny and Mindy and Alice and, uh, and me yeah. uh, together in the green room because she was introduced to everybody at a D23 uh, program wow. that, that Mindy did. And it was, uh, she's adorable. She is just the cutest little bundle you've ever seen in your life. So I introduce her in here. She did a, a lot of the face work to start with about 11 years before I did any of it. Wow, goodness. Well, you know, there was this pause right. with, with Peter Pan where the war came in between and all these things were going on. Yeah. And they really, they had locked down, but they hadn't locked down. So this cute face of hers, uh, I, I must say that now, at this moment, my face looks more like Tinkerbell's than <laughs> hers does, um, but she has the sweetest smile. Anyway, so Did I... Did you know when you were doing Tinkerbell that they wouldn't be using your face? No, they used my face all the way through. You see, but you have different st uh, stations steps in getting models you do the uh the live model who may not even move they just pose i have did that quite a bit for the um seven movies well the first two movies that they did with the fairies oh the fairy movies. yes i would the go over it and, and just you know do just do one little thing or just sit while they got the idea huh. so people got the idea of how i moved etc but what i did in front of the camera uh, was the last, <laughs> let's say, the well, if I say last or final, that sounds really dead. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's what they used with the animators. And I found out from Alice. Uh, from Alice uh, Davis? Uh, yes, Alice Davis, that Mark did most of the animation right. on Tinkerbell. Davis. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I thought several different animators did it. Well, they did, but not really. You know, he did the key key scene. Right. right. So they, did the, they were the in betweeners. Yeah. Well, no, he had a couple that that actually. As a matter of fact, there's one scene. If you look for it closely in Peter Pan, that was pointed out to me that she's off model, <gasps> but it goes so fast. <laughs> you, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> so Ginny so, Mac only did a couple of the reference shots before you came in. She did. Uh, they took pictures of her. They in the where they found her was in the picture archives. So it was Roy Williams, and he was stand. They they went to the back lot, which wasn't hard in those days because it was almost all back lot. Mm -hmm. And he was standing there, and he perched this beautiful lady, of slim trim, on a stool, and they took pictures of her as supposedly 
he was drawing her face. He was not. It was a publicity kind of thing or whatever. And she didn't really know what it was for, she said. Mm. This is Ginny Mac. <clears throat> it was Ginny Mac. They finally found her. Ah. At, at, um, I'm so glad they did. Yeah. Yeah, so. Oh. All right. But anyway, well, some of those uh, are in the book that way. And it's obvious that your book is sprinkled with pixie dust. Is that oh, right? Oh, absolutely. It's, here's, here's another one. You might like this one. Okay. I have always believed in serendipity. And this is in my last chapter, the final chapter. There we go again, last and final. I have 33 more stories for another book. I don't think I'll ever be able to do it. But anyway, the last chapter is about my friend Linda Swisher and how we became business buddies because of serendipity. She came up to the table and she said, do you think we could work together? And I knew it was a moment because I was going no place. This was fun, but how long could I do it? She knew what she was doing, having been a vendor and all of this stuff. And I said as quickly as I could, verbatim, I said, I think that can be arranged. <laughs> and she gave me her number and I gave her my number. And we've never looked back. But I keep talking about serendipity, which is really pixie dust as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> also providence. Mm -hmm. Well, serendipity comes from a fellow named Walpole in the 1700s who came up with the word serendipity. And it comes from a very famous myth of the three princes of serendip. That was the name of their country. And they were forever stumbling over and finding things that they didn't know they needed. <laughs> and that was the whole story. Wow. So that's what happened to me. I didn't know that I needed Linda. Right. You know, I didn't know that they would find out that this man was walking by and her, my mother was the model for serendipity. Um, I met my husband, Jack Wilcox, over at uh, Old North Church in um, the cemetery, Hollywood Cemetery, Forest Lawn. I looked down, and here was a sign that said they held church services. And I said, that's for me. It's noon on Sunday. I can sleep in. <laughs> you, know? you know, God knew all about it. So anyway, it was serendipitous. That, and I, I'm one of those people. Yeah. Now, other people, I love them. They pick up and they make it happen. Right. They just do. I have sat back and been sprinkled with pixie dust serendipitously <laughs> all my life when I looked back. And that's really the theme that runs through because I'm very excited about life. I'm very excited about what's around the corner. And, you know, Tinkerbell is too. That's perfect. <laughs> Let's now talk about your printer's proof event at Walt's Barn last August, August. the 7th. Oh, Gadzooks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, ordinarily, one person would order one printer's proof of a book so they can proofread it, but you ordered 175. Yes, I did. <laughs> I what clicked, happened? Well, I, I am an internet imbecile, <laughs> and they should never let me loose on it, and I didn't know that you could ask anybody, and uh, I'm doing it through Create Space. That's because uh, Mike Rounds, who is my shepherd, who has been doing all of this, and will rework the book because we lost the proofed um, version. That's what I'm doing tomorrow. Uh -huh. hmm. Anyway, uh, I'm working with him, and I'm getting a little bit too too cocky. <laughs> And he said, so we're all set so you can order those, and we'll get proofs of them. And so I looked at it, and I looked at it, and the words didn't mean the same to me. They Online. just they just didn't. Uh, those are words like, well, I can give you an example. The word swipe. To me, means to steal something. <laughs> and when they tell me to swipe my card, uh. I, 
you know, I have to change my mode of thinking. And that's not just one of them. But on the Internet, uh, they now ask me for my passive my password code. Passcode, right? Password yeah. code. Huh. No, it's password. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I say, do you mean password? Well, yes. And I'm thinking, they changed it yesterday? I don't, I don't know. But so I put in my password, a by George. It works. But they have a new name for it now. And they have a new name for this. They have a new name for that. So anyway, I looked at all three of these that I could click on. And it just seemed to me that that was the one. It said proof, <laughs> right? Yes. So it must be the one that we proofed. Okay. And it oh. says printer. So therefore, printer's proof. Yeah, that makes it okay. And I saw nothing to talk about ordering one. Okay. And so I thought, well, I'm going to do the launch, and it goes to Kansas City, 175. I wish you – well, I'm glad you weren't there when the books – some books were delivered to my house. Oh, no. And when I opened up <laughs> and I saw this book and the the opening on it, the, you know, where they – first of all, they put the wrong front page in. Oh, no. Yeah. And when it says, you know, all the legal stuff where it says, first edition, first printing – Printer in the United State of America. Uh, <laughs> in the what? What does it the, say? The United State oh, of America. No. That's what it says. <laughs> it, it was printed back in 17 what? I don't know. <laughs> and it got worse and worse and oh. worse. Oh. So I called up Linda and I said, what do I do? What do I do? And she said, don't panic. Don't panic. So she called up some of the people that, you know, have been fans for years. And oh, yeah. They said, we want one. Where do we get it? Where do we get it? Where do we get it? Yeah. Where do we get it? So we called up the barn and we said, this is the problem. Bring them over. Bring them wow. right over. So we did a launch of all of the, these books. I, as I say, I think I have six left. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> so they're now called collector's copies. Yes. And you sign each of them. Each right? one. Each <laughs> one. Well, I've seen a bunch of people on Facebook have been posting their copies with your signature, and they're so happy to get them. I'm stunned. Oh, <laughs> I am you. absolutely stunned, and I hope there was no naughty words. I can tell you that <laughs> after going through it. Uh, but, but anyway, it was my fault. So then we went back, because I'm flying to Mount Airy the end of this month to do the Andy Griffith show. And I've got, That's been canceled oh, wow. for decades. And they've got lots of Tinkerbell fans now, oh. a, a whole bunch. So I will be getting books there. So we had to order some new ones. So I, I, I had uh, uh, Mike sit right next to me, you know, <laughs> so that we could do it. And he... They can't find it. They cannot find the proofed ones. <sighs> they evidently I hit another button. Oh no! And <laughs> off it went it into cyberspace. To, to, to Neverland. You know, to Neverland. Neverland. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, it'll take two days. But I have to tell you, a serendipity. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Some of the pictures didn't come out the way I wanted. I'm exchanging the pictures. Oh, perfect. Yes, some of the, uh, I think I could write a, a little paragraph here better than it was. Uh, I, I have back pages. I'm going to read something to you in a couple of minutes. But I have back pages in this. And one of the, why I put them in were pictures that really didn't go any place. Mm -hmm. And and people that I love, I actually have a copy in here of the letter that Dave Smith sent from archives oh, wow. to my daughter to said, of course, it was Margaret that was Tinkerbell. Wow. I found it. Wow. And all, so it's copied there. And on top of that, um, I got... I hope you can see it way over there. You folks, I'll get close to the microphone. <sighs> and it's a it's a picture of Walt Disney, but it's a portrait when he was about twenty eight yeah. or thirty, and it's his real signature at the bottom, and it is the last 
Ooh. picture in the book. It's my gift to everyone. It's a portrait with taken in a studio. Wow. Is that not something? Wow. That is. Yeah. It's the actual signature so, right there. This is really cool. This book is, uh, how about 400, 400, over 400 pages? Yes, over 400 pages. And it's nice and thick and lots of pictures in here. And, like, Skywalkers, a, you need to get this book. It's a 7 by 10. 7 by, oh, 7 inches by 10. Yes. Inches, yeah. And did you and see a beautiful it? picture of you on the front. Yes, and that was Howard Green over at Disney's 13 years ago said, that's what you must have on the cover. Mm -hmm. Then I sent it to Ron Diaz, who has since passed, and he's the one who did the rest of the cover. And I've had that cover for 10 years. Oh, perfect. I didn't have to worry about it. Wow. Now, I'm going to read something to you on the back. Are you about out of? We have time. Okay. <clears throat> you know on the back... There's a picture of me as Tinkerbell. There's a picture of me being spanked by Charlie Ruggles. There's a sketch that Joel Seibel did of me as a little girl looking like Tinkerbell. It's adorable. There's pictures of me in um, our gang or the Little Rascals, the Lone Ranger, um, the uh, Clutch Cargo, the Three Stooges as the Mermaid. And you know that they write on the back of books. Yes. Quotes that people say how great the book is. Okay. <clears throat> this is a quote. Of the two books I have read, this is my favorite. I give it two thumbs up. Captain Hook. <laughs> <laughs> and here's John Darling. An exceedingly out of the ordinary book. I must study it, its ramifications immediately. Miss Carey, I tip my hat to you. And this one is from The Crocodile. Miss Carey's book is great. It tastes just like chicken. <laughs> <laughs> so now, how many of these do you have left? A six. Six. <gasps> so if anyone wants to get one of these exclusive collector's copies, where do they go to get it? Uh, it would have to be to um, Linda Swisher. Okay. And that's, it's Gifts by Small Fry. It's gifts, all one word. Gifts, gifts by Small Fry. Gifts by Small Fry at roadrunner.com or... They can go to TinkerbellTalks.com, and they will see that address on it. it okay. Ha the, the date and the, and the button to order it have not been put up yet because the book probably will go to press on the 16th. Ooh, uh, September? Of September? Of September. Oh, okay. Okay, so what's, what's the official release date now? For the proofed copy. The I, official. Ha I have no idea. <laughs> okay. I don't know, but they turn it out so fast. Okay. They, so beyond the six, so somewhere after I would September sixteenth. I would say it about six days after that. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Yeah. So it's a it's a good bet. It'll be this month in September. Yes. Okay. Yes, because I'm taking them up to Mount Airy, and we have about ten thousand people up there, and I'm doing a Tinkerbell wow. meets Andy Griffith show up <sighs> there. So where I tap dance and I tell stories and I oh read from... How many episodes of Andy Griffith were you on? Two. Oh. I was on the, the Christmas show, which is probably the most favorite show of the whole series. Yeah. And I was on Andy Forecloses. Um, and I was Bess Muggins in one and Helen Scobie. But one of the reasons that they love me is because almost everybody else is dead. You know, I'm... <laughs> 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 now, darling Betty Lynn just had her 90th birthday, and she wow. uh, she lives there. Oh. So she's she comes. So um, they don't love you by default. <laughs> no. I tell them that, and they love it. <laughs> well, I'm... Yeah, uh, I was going to ask you, can you read like a paragraph from your book just to hear your voice, just to give everyone a kind of a preview? Let's see. Hang on. I was adopted when I was four and put to work in the movies, which was a very interesting thing, but a very peculiar thing. And I had a Hollywood mother named Good God Grace. I was six years old before I knew that her name was not Good God Grace, because that's the way I always heard my father very patiently say to her, Good God Grace, have a little faith in me. Well... She would do very odd things, at least to me, as you could understand. And she would say things like, Peggy, 
You've got to work hard so you'll be somebody. She always meant well. However, her motivational ploy confused me. Be somebody? I already was somebody. Did I have to be more than I was? Evidently. Of course, that's not what my mother had in mind, but that's what I heard. Oh, if children could only know that adults have unfulfilled urges, that strivings, that that they really have kept bottled up for years. So some years later, it became so clear to me that my earnest little mother wanted to be somebody herself. She was truly frustrated and must have felt that I was wasting my opportunity. Trained as a violinist, my mother told me once during one of the few times she ever reminisced that she had been highly praised by her teacher. They said that she had the gift of magic in her left hand. I heard her play only once. Visiting Aunt Lily Hook, an ancient family friend, I wandered off and on an old sideboard propped up in its tattered black case, I spotted a battered violin with one string missing. I carried it into the living room to ask about it. Oh, let me see it, Mother said. She carefully held the grungy-looking instrument by the neck and took her ever-present handkerchief to gently wipe off the dust. We all watched her pluck at the three strings while fussing with the rust, rust tinge ivory pegs at the top of the instrument. She had tuned it. Amazing. Mother tucked the violin under her chin, readjusting it to fit more comfortably. Then lifting up a very tired-looking bow, she brought it down lightly on the strings. She began to play She began to play something slow and lovely. It was beautiful. Mother was very, very quiet the rest of the afternoon. Oh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope you're going to be the one to, to read the audio version Which of this. Which you can see, I yeah. have a hard time. So that was kind of like your mother's unfulfilled dreams right there, right? But she, was, she would do the strangest things. <laughs> she moved my birthday back six months. Wow. So I, I thought I was born on November 11th, Armistice Day, uh, till I was 15. I mean, it, it, it just okay. <clears throat> I just want to comment that it sounded like you have an aunt whose last name was Hook. Any relation to Captain? No, <laughs> <laughs> they're very good, Aunt Lily. <laughs> and, yeah. So now, if, when people want to follow the progress to. To see when the official release is going to oh, be, yes. they should go to Facebook, I would imagine, and my website. Okay, so TinkerbellTalks.com. Mm-hmm. And then also, you are on Twitter as well. Am at I? Tinkerbell Talks. You oh, are. You I'm so things. glad. You retweet things that I, that I post. Really? Yes. That was David Dirks. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he did all of that. Bless him. I have no idea. And poor me, uh, I mean, I love people, and they all send them. Um, may I join your LinkedIn? Oh, yeah. And I keep <laughs> no thinking. No one knows what that is. Yeah. And I keep thinking, yes, of course. However, I don't have a history on it at all or a picture. Right. So I'm going to get somebody to do that. Um, if you are a speaker, and that's what I would like to do next year, is start speaking at schools and libraries and places like that. Now, I, I are a author, you know, that's a, <laughs> yes. uh, that... You have to have that because that would be the first place that they would look to see whether you are, you know, I did, I spoke twice at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library Mm -hmm. and I got standing ovation at the end. Of course you did. (laughs) Can I tell you why? Why? I happen to be a libertarian. And uh, the reason I became a libertarian was because the Republicans and the Democrats a hundred years ago, kept jamming my mailbox with all kinds of literature. And I thought, who would never send me a piece of literature? The libertarians. <laughs> so that's why I joined them. And you know what? They never have. <laughs> so, so anyway, I'm, 
I finish up uh, when I do my shows. I read a scene from usually the nursery where Peter comes back for his shadow with different voices for Peter Pan, for Wendy, and for Tinkerbell. And so I want people, I ask them, the audience, please, to stand up and stretch and then turn around twice and pretend they're in their jammies and settle back down into their chairs. So I'm there at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library, and I said, now stretch, please. Oh, feel good. Now turn around twice. No, no, no. Turn to the right. Never turn to the left. (laughs) Well, it cracked them up. (laughs) And then at the very end, uh, where I said, now I need help because you have to call out the ending of this, it takes faith and trust, but verify. And, and so I did it again. And they're all yelling, but verify, of course, which is his famous uh, phrase that he always used, trust, but verify. <laughs> and then they all scream back at me, and pixie dust, Aww. all of these very staid uh, docents and in their uniforms. Yeah. So we did it twice, and I loved it, and I'll probably go back now that I have a book nice. that, that goes with it. Now, finally, what do you hope people will take away from your book after they're done reading it? Laughter. Aww. Absolute laughter. I want them to know that Tinkerbell's life and my life is just each day. It's, there is a saying in there, one of my favorites saying, if I can get it out right. Blessed are we who can laugh at ourselves. We will always be amused. And that's the whole thing. We laugh at ourselves. Mm. But that one of my favorites in there, the, their, the very last model that I put in is one that I like because it starts out with the shadow of Peter Pan. But this is mine. My son's is in there. When I asked him, okay, smarty pants, what's life? Uh, and he says, life is a conflict of interest. Oh, boy. <laughs> and so I put it in there. I think it's great. Mine says, living my pixie-dusted life, I have learned a curious thing. Only I can cast my own shadow. <laughs> and it's true. I smile. I laugh. I just... That's the whole thing, and I think I bring that to people, and certainly Tinkerbell does. Mm -hmm. Well, if that doesn't want to make the Skywalkers go in and get Tinkerbell talks, tales of a pixie-dusted life, I don't know what will. Uh, Margaret, thank you very much for joining us once again. Uh, Well, I'm delighted, and thank you for your patience as we're taking bits and pieces. You know, folks, they have to edit this up one side and down the other to make sense out of what I talk. They're so kind to me. Listen to them. They are kind people. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. All right. That was only about 10 minutes.